The other day when it was super, super windy, I lost my favorite mask. It must have blown out when I opened my car door or whatever. Oh. And I, I went back to where I was. Uh -huh. And again, because it was so windy, I mean, I, I couldn't find it. Oh, so which like, one was it? On it? I think I have some more of that material left, though. So. And I don't have my sewing machine set up yet, so if I find the material, I may come over to your house and come on over. put one more together. <laughs> um, Emmanuel Howlwood Manger Ground. Is it time? Give a good morning and let's see. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm good with starting. If you are, whenever. Door just closed on its own. That was weird. Okay. Is D. He doesn't look like he's quite ready, does he? Hey, where's she at? Because we all have masks on, she doesn't know what we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good morning. We're glad that you're here. Um, if you would join us in worship this morning, we're singing Emmanuel, Hollywood Manger Ground.
what hope we hold this starlit night. A king is born in Bethlehem. Our journey long, we seek the light that leads to the hallowed manger ground. What fear we felt in this silent age, 400 years can he be found, but broken by. may be seated. I want to welcome you to our worship service this morning here at First United Methodist Church in Beeville. I say that because hopefully there are some of you um, uh, out here on Facebook watching and uh, or listening on the radio at 106 FM. So we're grateful for you. Uh, I have a few things I want to bring up to you. Uh, first of all, we have started with our pledge campaign. If you have not filled out a pledge card, I do encourage you to please do so. This is important for us from a budgetary standpoint, but more importantly, it's, it's important for you spiritually. This is your spiritual act. It is an act of obedience to God, uh, and it's standing up for God and our church. So if you have not filled out a pledge card, I encourage you to do that. We have some pledge cards in the back, and we have um, a little treasure chest there you can drop them into. And when you fill out your pledge card, don't forget the back, because this isn't just about money. We're here about your time, your talents, and your gifts. And the back gives you an opportunity to tell us where you would like to serve in your church. So we do hope that you will fill this out. Uh, and leave it back uh, at the uh, table. It's on the, in the narthex on the right-hand side. Just drop it in that um, treasure chest. Uh, this is Advent, um, and we have some materials for you if you want to do a devotional. We have the red book called Joy to the World. This is a, a daily uh, reading. It begins today. This is the first Sunday of Advent. We also have a book, if you're more interested in uh, investigative journalism, The Case for Christ, written by 
Lee Strobel, who is an investigative journalist who undertook to provide or to locate the evidence for the true uh, birth of Jesus. Um, and then lastly, we have a few of these treasure books left over. These are great books, and you can read them anytime. It's not like this is just a, a, a stewardship book or a stewardship devotional. These are, these are devotionals you can read anytime. So we hope you avail yourself of these, um, these materials. Um, last thing you'll notice in your bulletin, there's a little calendar for December. Go take this home, highlight some stuff that you want to be sure to attend. I will point a few things out. December 16th at, at uh, 6 o'clock, we are planning as of right now to have a Christmas party in the Fellowship Hall. Now, we're mindful of, obviously, the COVID situation. We'll be monitoring that. Uh, we will do things a little differently. Where We'll have people who actually serve you with whatever you would like to have. Um, so that is uh, in process. Uh, we hope that the COVID situation is mild enough that we feel comfortable doing this. Then on the 22nd of December at 6 o'clock, is something called the Longest Night Service. This is a service for those who are particularly um, grieving during the uh, holy season, during this, this Christmas season. You know, Christmas is not always happy for some people, either due to loss of loved ones, loss of job, um, loneliness. Um, so this is a service of hope for those who are struggling during this uh, season. And then, of course, December 24th, we will have our Christmas Eve worship service. We are planning to do that. So do mark these things on your calendar. Take this calendar home. Get one of those fridge magnets. Put it on your refrigerator so you always have it in front of you. And then lastly, we have our um, Sanctuary Poinsettia order forms in the back. If you would like to order a poinsettia in memory of someone or in honor of someone or just want to purchase a poinsettia to make the sanctuary beautiful, they're $10 each. Uh, just fill out this form and uh, we will be happy to order a poinsettia for you. It will be displayed uh, by Christmas Eve, if not the Sunday before. Uh, we need your orders in by December 10th so we can make sure we get those. But we will display them, uh, hopefully, uh, the Sunday before Christmas Eve and certainly on Christmas Eve, uh, and really beautify the sanctuary. Um, those are all of the announcements I have. I invite you now to uh, join with us in worship as our worship leader shares uh, a prayer for us. If you'd bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the first day of Advent season. We thank you that... You came to be the Savior of the world. We ask that you would keep those that are around us safe during the holiday season. We ask that you would just, we just thank you for everything that you're doing in our life and continue to do. And we just ask that you would continue to work in our lives. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to sing number hymn number 189 or... For most of the people in this congregation, posted on the screen, Fairest Lord Jesus. If you'd like to stand, you may.
Hi, we are at the Stark family. This is Keith, I'm Randall, this is Ames, and this is Hayes. Okay. <clears throat> if ever there was a year we needed Advent, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe the year we have lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all that has happened in 2020. All we know is that nothing seems right. Nothing seems like it used to be. Nothing. We need Advent. The prophet Isaiah once cried out to the God, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known so that nations might tremble at your presence. So tear through the mess, O oh Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you will meet us even in the mess of our world. Hope that you will see us though we feel lost in the rubble. Let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen. If I could have all of our children come forward, we will now be having children's time. Love your little boots, dude. I need to get me a pair like that. Yeah. Now, y'all know fairy tales, right? You know the whole fairy tale thing. The princess is waiting in the highest room of the tallest tower. There's a dragon guarding her. And she's waiting for her Prince Charming, her knight in shining armor, or I guess in some cases Shrek, to save her. She's waiting to be rescued from this place that she's been in for so long. Well, Advent's kind of like that. See, we all know that Advent is about the birth of Jesus. But to the people who lived at the time, it was more than just the birth of a baby to them as it is to us. They were waiting for the coming of their Savior. They were waiting for someone to come that was going to save them. But they didn't quite expect their Savior was going to be a baby. Just like the princess and Shrek didn't think her Savior was going to be, well, Shrek. <laughs> the expectations, what they thought was going to happen, was different. But they were still waiting in anticipation for their Savior. So Advent is a lot like us waiting, knowing that our Savior is coming too. Just like all of you guys are waiting for your presence on Christmas Day. So think about waiting. Think about waiting for Jesus through Advent. As you're thinking about your presence, as you're thinking about Christmas Day coming, like Santa Claus... Also think about the fact that we're celebrating Jesus, our Savior, being born. <laughs> Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for saving us. And thank you for Jesus. Amen. All right, let's go get y'all y'all's treats. Our scripture reading this morning is Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 8. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down, and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times no one has heard, no ear has perceived, 
No eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter, we are all the work of your hand. This is the word of God for the people of God. We have a rule in our house. Before we invite guests over to our house, I first have to get Mama's approval. Because one thing Mama will not tolerate is someone coming over and the house isn't perfect for them. You know, if the house is just not ready for visitors, she will tell us that... Uh, you know, you just can't have people over. Now, never mind if it's a long-lost relative who has come from halfway around the world to come see us. If the house isn't ready, it's no go. And uh, she uses phrases like, uh, uh, and some you may have used before, the house is a wreck which means there's some dishes in the sink. Or the house is a mess, which means there may be some newspapers or something in the family room. How many of you have used phrases like that? Oh, I hope they don't come over. The house is a wreck. Or the house is a mess. Mm -hmm. Now, not everybody is like that. Not everybody uh, is, uh, you know... We're always worried about how the house looks. But, you know, for my wife, if you're coming over, the house had better look really good. Conversely, conversely, if we do get the house all cleaned up and we invite guests over uh, and we get and they come over and, and everything's perfect and everything's clean and then they leave. We usually say something like this: We ought to have guests over more often. We'll keep the house clean. You know, isn't that the way it is? Isn't that the way things go sometimes? You know, I really need for the house to be clean. Now, some people keep their houses in tip-top shape. If you're one of those people, raise your hand. I, I see someone pointing fingers, but, uh, you know, in that way, it's, it's always fine if someone comes over, or some people, and I'm kind of like one of those people, would rather just guests just come over whether the house is in perfect condition or not, mm-hmm. you know, that's the way I feel about it, so uh, anyway, that's, uh, you know, that's all to sort of uh, act as a little prelude to our Scripture today. In our scripture today, this is from the prophet Isaiah, and it's from the 64th chapter, which is just three chapters from the end of his prophecy. And it's a prophecy that frankly spans hundred, uh, well over a hundred years, maybe as many as 200 years or 300 years. 
Now, he didn't live that long, but there were other prophets of his school who would finish out these writings as, as they experienced the presence and the Word of God. He warned the Israelites, and he prayed that God would tear open the heavens and that by doing that, God would himself come down and be with the Israelites. Because you see, God, when God comes down, people will straighten up. It's just like, you know, when, when you know God's coming, you're going to be cleaning up your house, right? You're going to be cleaning up your spiritual house. And that's what, need, that's what needed to take place with Israel. Uh, Israel uh, needed to clean up the house. In fact, the, the prophet says, We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. In other words, God, maybe if you will come down, maybe if you will be here, we'll clean up our act. Now, there's nothing, more, there's nothing like an important guest to cause us to clean our house. Well, let's get a little background on the Scripture. You see, we have to remember that when God called Abraham to bless the world with a holy nation, he told Abraham that you're going to have many descendants, that they are going to be my people, they're going to be my nation, they're going to be your light throughout the rest of the world. Instead, Israel became completely focused inwardly. Instead of being a light, instead of sharing the news about the one true God to all the pagan lands, Israel became very inwardly focused. Even today, Jews are known to live and socialize within their own communities, and they don't integrate well with others. That's been true ever since the nation of Israel was formed. It wasn't God's plan. But not only that, the nation of Israel over time became disobedient to God's laws. Instead of being the city on a hill leading other nations and pagan worshipers to the one true God, they themselves became self-focused and began a downward spiral of disobedience. A few weeks ago, I preached from Joshua 24 when Joshua challenged the Israelites after they had settled in the land that God had given them. Once all the Israelites got settled, Joshua called an assembly of all the tribes together. And he says, Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your ancestors in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. That was the challenge that Joshua made to all of Israel once they got settled. Well, the Israelites responded to this challenge as if by one voice. They assured Joshua that they will serve the one true God and him only, and that they would never serve any pagan idols. But over time, they forgot that promise. And as that promise faded into the background, they became increasingly disobedient to God. They became more and more self-focused. They forgot about some of the laws that concern Christian fellowship. Sounds like us today. As time goes on, as the freshness of our salvation becomes a distant memory, we tend to stray away from God. We tend to uh, not follow God's expectations of the way we live. We tend to not be praying as much as we should. We tend to not be in the Scripture like we should. 
Our spiritual disciplines tend to fall apart. Well, the Israelites, eventually God would allow them, because they became so disloyal, He would allow them to become or to be attacked by foreign invaders. You see, God withdrew His hand of protection from the Israelites. And they were attacked by Assyria from the north and Babylon from the east and uh, the Edomites from the southeast. They were attacked. And those who weren't killed were removed from the land that God had promised them. They were removed and taken captive in these foreign lands. And these prophets were speaking to them while they were in the foreign lands, urging them to turn back to God, to repent of their sin, to get back to the loving and covenant relationship that they are always supposed to have with God. And so it was with Isaiah. You see, this particular scripture was written after the Jews were allowed to come back to Jerusalem from Babylon to rebuild Jerusalem, to again be restored as a nation under Persian control. Yet even under that uh, freedom that they were given, they went back to their ways of being disobedient, to be the, the filthy rags that Isaiah used to describe them. And so Isaiah felt the need to call upon God to come down to earth so that Israel would clean up her act so that Israel would clean her spiritually dirty home. Now this is the first Sunday of Advent, and in the front of your bulletins, I have a little description of what Advent is all about. That comes from the United Methodist Church website. Basically, Advent means the inbreaking of God's presence in our lives. Now the most obvious and the most noteworthy example of God breaking into the lives of his people was when Jesus was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. But that's not what Advent is for today. Advent is, is not a time where we just look back with, look back with sentimentality to the birth of Jesus and say, oh, isn't that nice? No, Advent is looking today and into the future based upon what's happened in the past. It's not about what was. Advent is about what is and what is to come. In other words, Advent is a time where we spiritually prepare our hearts for the second coming of Jesus Christ. But not only that, Advent is a time of preparing our spiritual homes so that we can receive new visitors, new revelations of Jesus Christ in our lives, even today. I mean, how many of us today look for revelations of Jesus in our lives and in the lives of others? Or do we just go on about our lives as if Jesus isn't even here. We need to clean up the mess. We need to be better prepared. It doesn't take much imagination today to see how far we have, have wavered, how far we have strayed from the teachings of the Gospels. We have strayed so far away, and we are badly in need as Christians to clean up. We need to clean up our acts. We need to be rid of our self-focus, our self-centeredness, our anger, our hatred, our divisions. Instead of celebrating division, we should be joining together in unity as Christians. 
And so I ask you this question. What will the next four weeks mean to you? Will it be the usual hurry and scurry? Will it be the usual overindulgence in shopping and giving and eating? Or will it be a time for house cleaning? A time of preparing for the coming of company? Holy company, sacred company. And so what intentional steps will you take during the next four weeks to prepare your hearts to receive a special guest? I like the way our scripture ends. The very last verse is one that should be familiar to us. Verse 8. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. So will we, over these next four weeks, become like clay? Which means will we surrender our wills to God's will? Will we allow God to prepare us with his own hands into the people that God intends us to be? As I was thinking about closing this, I thought about the Emmaus song. As we think about Advent as the inbreaking of God in our lives and look ahead to the second coming of Christ. We sing in Emmaus, Hallelujah, He is coming. Hallelujah, He is here. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join with me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come now to our time of prayer, and as always, we want to begin the prayer by sharing some of the joys we had. Uh, We just celebrated Thanksgiving, and so I'm going to just start by asking you, did you have a joyful Thanksgiving? Good. Amen. Uh, You know, it's, uh, you know, watch the news and all the states that are telling people not to have people over to your house for Thanksgiving, and I just, I mean, you know. I know that's hard, but we still have much to be thankful for, and I do, I'm do. i grateful to hear that you all had a blessed Thanksgiving. I had a blessed Thanksgiving. I had all my family in town, uh, including my little granddaughter, and so that was really a blessing, so I got to play with her a lot. Um, so I would like to hear from you your joys, your joys. So what joys would you share with us today? Thank you for the wonderful rain. Amen. A bunch of you were going to say that, right? Mm -hmm. 
What other joys do you have? The what? Oh, time with family, absolutely. All right, so Emily just passed a very important exam and was the highest in her class. Other joys? Cool weather. Cool weather, which is good because our air conditioner is still out <laughs> and will be for a time. Other joys? Having family come visit you during Thanksgiving. Amen. <laughs> more, more than 10 in New Braunfels. I'm sure that's okay in New Braunfels, you know. You know. Uh, other joys. Amen. You know, being together as a family is a wonderful time to laugh at some of, you know, have great memory sharing, but also laugh at some of the things that we've done as a family. Um, so that's a joy. Other joys? Pastor. Behind you. Back there, behind you. Oh, hi. <laughs> I was able to participate in the Detroit, Michigan turkey trot with my sister yesterday. And she, for my birthday, she enrolled me in this race. And so yesterday morning, we put on our shoes. We called each other on the phone. And during the thunder and the wind and the rain, I, um, I participated in the turkey trot and got my 5K in. <laughs> All right. That's dedication. That is. Way to go. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Other joys. Well, for all of our joys, what do we say? Thanks be to God. And we come now to our time of prayer. Um, you know, we want to pray for healing for our air conditioning system. Uh, we want to, uh, but truly, seriously, we want to lift up all of those that we've been remembering in prayer. Uh, I've had several prayer requests this week for people who are uh, who just got COVID, um, and, I, and I'm, it's my honor to pray for them. Uh, so for all the people who have uh, who are suffering COVID at this time, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We want to continue to pray for Imogene Teggy as she uh, continues to be at uh, Hacienda Oaks, uh, recovering from her stroke. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, what a, and if you're listening at home and you have prayer requests and you're on Facebook, just type in your prayer requests. Uh, on the comment section, and we will be praying over those. So please do share your prayer requests. As for the con congregation, please share your prayer requests. For Bo McFarland, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The Wilder family in their time of sorrow, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. David Morgan. David Morgan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lacey Hall, who may be facing another amputation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. David Hutchins, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Marla Scott, yes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, for those who are traveling back to San Antonio, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yeah. Sheila yeah. Sisk. Sisk, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Family of Pam Nolan, Pam Nolan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yeah, what, what, whatever is going to happen in this school year, <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. John Crumpler, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Well, 
Right. For Samuel uh, Benavides and all of the college students are taking finals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up these prayer concerns in faith in the firm belief that you hear our prayers, that you receive our prayers, and that you answer those prayers, sometimes in ways we can't even possibly imagine. But we have that faith that you are acting when we intercede for others. So we lift up, we're, we're lift up together as a congregation those spoken prayers, and we also lift up those prayers that people are holding next to their hearts. Father, thank you. We, we just want to stop and say thank you at the end of this Thanksgiving week to thank you for all of our blessings. Sometimes during unusual years like 2020 with all the catastrophes, calamities, and whatnot, we tend to look at the bad, but we forget to look at the good. We forget to look at the ways that you have blessed us and to say thank you, thank you. Forgive us for not being as thankful as we should be. Heavenly Father, we know we fail you, but your mercy is everlasting and we have faith in that as well as we repent of our sins and ask again for forgiveness with gratitude for your son Jesus, for paying the ultimate price for our sins. We pray that as we go forth from this place today, that we will go forth in the name of your son Jesus, that we will be his hands, his feet, his eyes, and most importantly, his heart in our community. And now we join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we prepare our hearts to receive Holy Communion. And if there's any one thing that unites us as Christians, it's joining together in receiving the Holy Meal, the Holy Communion. So I invite you now to join with me in the prayer of confession as found on your screens. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to silently confess your own personal sins before God as you prepare to receive Holy Communion. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That is proof of God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. <clears throat> On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he was with his disciples. He was seated at a Passover feast, and we believe that when the second loaf of bread was 
offered or may have been the third loaf of bread. Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks to the Father. He then broke the bread and handed it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took a cup of wine, which we believe was the cup of redemption at that Passover meal. He again gave thanks to the Father. Then he passed the cup around to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with what Christ has done for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those of us gathered here and those of us listening on Facebook or listening on the radio. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Does anyone not have any communion elements? If so, raise your hand. We'll bring them to you. Okay. So we take the, take the saran wrap off the top. Take the bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. And then we take the foil covering off the top. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite you to now stand as you're able and join with us in the closing prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to be singing as our closing hymn, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. And again, it har harkens back to verse 8 of our reading where we profess that we are the clay but God is the potter. We're in his hands. He won't, when we ask him, when we submit to him, we ask him to mold us and make us into the way he wants us to be. That's submission. Please join with us as we sing this closing hymn.
Amen. I send you now in this Advent season to go and clean up our spiritual homes, clean up our spiritual houses, be ready to receive a special guest during these four weeks. Be intentional during this time and go and serve Christ in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love incarnate, love divine Star and angels gave the sign Bow to babe on bended knee The Savior of humanity to us a child is born, he shall reign forevermore. No.
real cartoons. Do you need a lozenge? Hi.